Ever wanted a macro that can pretty much do anything and everything that every other macro in this game can do? Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to use the Nate Row macro. And yes, it is pronounced Nate Row. Stop calling it Natro. Oh my god! A lot of thought and effort and time go into these videos, so if you could, please subscribe and like this video. And if you have anything to say to me, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I'll probably eventually read it. I might not respond to it, but I'll probably see it. I'm always spying on you guys. Okay, step one, download the latest version of Auto Hotkey. You can find Auto Hotkey in the Google Chrome. Download Auto Hotkey from their official website. Go to the official Nate Row Macro server and go ahead and download the latest version of the Nate Row Macro, which currently it's 9.0, but in a couple of days will be 9.1. Once you've done that, go ahead and unpack the Nate Row Macro. It will be in a zip file. You go ahead and unpack that. Just press extract and extract it to wherever you want on your computer and uh, go ahead once you're done with that you're going to want to launch the nate row macro and done boom you've downloaded it it's that easy it's literally four steps and it takes you about a minute to two minutes depending on how long it takes you okay let's jump right into how to use the nate row macro ah here we have it nate row so i'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the uh the default one i think it's mac lion yeah there we go okay mac lion 3 got it okay so in a nutshell this macro is every macro slapped into one single application on your desktop allowing you to do literally anything and customize this macro in any way that you want so to start off we're going to talk about how to bug run okay step one go to collect slash kill then you're going to want to select bug run it selects all of the little mobs down below you can go ahead and uncheck any mobs that you don't want to kill or loot or anything like that you can kill them but not loot them which i don't see why you would do that if you have a gifted vicious bee in your hive be sure you check off apply gifted hive bonus so that way you don't offset the timers now if you want to collect stingers you can go ahead and check off the stingers button and if you want to select certain fields to get stingers from vicious bees uh, you can go ahead and click on fields here and you can uncheck any fields you don't want and check any fields that you do want so if you don't want it to check Cloverfield because Cloverfield is essentially useless. You can go ahead and uncheck that. And now when it's nighttime, your macro will not search for stingers in the Cloverfield. It'll just completely skip over that. And you can just do that with any field you want. Um, I suggest you leave them all checked because like, you know, every 24 hours you can get like 90 stingers, I think. I, I mean, that's what I've been getting so far. I have 4,200 right now, uh, which is pretty good. Now, if you want to take down bosses, you can do that too. You can have it automatically take down your Tunnel Bear, King Beetle, Coco coconut crab stomp snail or even the commando check if you want i suggest you have baby love active if you do have baby love sources if you do not have baby love sources in your hive uncheck those so you're not just standing there waiting for a non-existent baby love now if you'd like your macro to collect random dispensers around the uh, around the globe around the mountain um you can select those here you can get it to collect the wealth clock which is this right here so every every hour your uh, macro will take you over to the wealth clock and collect tickets i suggest you turn that on because it gives you the wealth clock buff you can enable mondo check so your macro will take you up here to the mountaintop every hour and take down the mondo chicken or even just get you the mondo chicken buff so you don't even have to waste time taking down the entire mondo check but you you can change that right here to kill the mondo chick and loot the mondo chick you can have ant pass or ant challenge enabled so you can either do the challenge or collect the ant pass for you you can enable robot pass pretty new the robo pass is used in the robo challenge and now for beesmus you have these right here if it's not beesmus do not enable these but if it is beesmus be sure to enable them immediately or well as soon as you finish the quest and obtain these beesmus dispensers yeah there's of course the regular dispensers over here you can get glue royal jelly coconut strawberry blueberry treat honey i only suggest you really use the glue one because that's really the only useful one in my opinion but i am glad that they added in all the dispensers it adds to the customability of this macro custom customizability is it customizability Okay, now if you're not here to bug run and you're here just to make straight up honey or gather a bunch of treats, you can use the gather feature on the Nate Row macro. Step one is ensure you have bug run disabled. Be sure you turn all of these off, all of them, except for these over here. They don't really affect gather that much, so just keep those on if you'd like. Step number two is open the gather tab. Now, once you're in the gather tab, you're going to be greeted with this big screen that might seem a little 
little confusing, but it's pretty simple once you sort of like, I guess, get the hang of it. Okay, so now you're going to want to click on this. It's going to be on default sunflower, but you can click on sunflower and you can select your desired field that you want to be gathering from, gathering treats from, whatever you want to call it, gathering in general from. Anyways, select your desired field. You can add a field rotation, which is uh, one, two, and three. You can rotate through three fields. The devs over at Natro are so gracious to give us the option to change the movement pattern of the macro. So that way you have the option to change your gather path. Be sure you turn on field drift compensation as well, by the way. It prevents you from falling out of the field repeatedly, which I know is a problem for most macros. Not for this one. The fail safes on this thing are crazy. Next up, we have gather until. This is what until means. It means to how long to be in the field for, how long to be gathering for. You can set a time and you can set for how how filled your backpack is. I'd suggest going with 95%. So when your backpack's almost full, you go back to your hive and convert and you don't waste any time. Now you can change how you return to the hive by walking, resetting, or rejoining. You may also change the rotation of the camera before gatherings. Let's say I want to go into the field straight ahead. I can have it rotate to that. Or if I want to be collecting at a diagonal angle, I can do that. And uh, boom, this is what it would look like. I can do it as many times as I want. Any rotation any camera rotation you want so you can be gathering at any angle that you want in the field sprinkler i don't suggest you touch this it's already set to a default one that's actually pretty good for each field so like if i wanted to go to clover see how it changes it there it's already set to the best spot in the field in my opinion now of course there can't be a gather macro without a boost macro which there is a boost feature built into this thing i know it, it just gets better and better the more i talk about it right anyway so this feature is incredibly simple to use pretty much you have your HQ field boosters, which are the red HQ. Sorry, I just pointed at the blue and called it red. The red HQ, the blue HQ, and the white field booster hidden up there in the mountaintop. So you'd go to HQ boosters, and every hour or any time that the field booster is ready, your macro will go up, run to it, and get the field boost, and it will activate it. And you can set it to gather in that boosted field, which is incredibly handy in case you don't want to waste a field boost. So that's pretty nifty, isn't it? You can have all three boosters active if you'd like. You can separate each boost by a certain amount of time, like maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes. So it does the blue boost, waits 15 minutes, does the red boost, waits 15 minutes, does the mountaintop boost, waits 15 minutes, all that. And it cycles through all three of them. Of course, you've also got your regular buffs that you can use during your macro, like your glitter. You can use your extracts, like blue extracts. If I put it in hotbar slot number two, and then I set this to hotbar slots settings, we got at use it at the hive we've got it use it always gathering attacking micro converting uh whirly gigs enzymes gather at start if we used something like gathering it would use the blue extract during gathering or if we set this thing right here to attacking it would use like uh, let's say slot number two was a stinger it would use the stinger every time it's attacking which i don't advise you turn that on things like that that's exactly what all this does micro converting that is literally what it says it's micro converting enzymes there's gathering Gather at start, um, and there's Whirly Gig as well. So gather start is when you first start gathering, it uses the blue extract, but doesn't use it throughout the rest of the gathering if it passes 10 minutes. Does that make sense? It's just at the start will it use the blue extract. Anyways, here's the big part of boosting. This is the auto field boost feature, which is absolutely crazy. The developers are incredibly kind and they give us an auto field boost description to read from. So that's just overall like how it works, how it functions. It's, it's not confusing, I hope. It's pretty simple. I mean, what it is, is just when you get a field boost, it's gonna go to that field, it's gonna use dice, and then it's gonna, well, if you have dice in there, but it's gonna use glitter and all that to stack the field boost and you will be able to use buffs using those hotkeys that are automatically set. So it'll automatically boost pretty much for you so yeah that is pretty material expensive but if you are willing to do that you can that is an option there are deactivation limits that you can set so like it's how long you're going to boost for or when you're going to boost and sort of how many glitters and how many dice you can use so it's kind of like the length of the boost if that makes sense that is it for the boost feature on this macro one of many that just about covers it for gathering now one of the big 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 fat important parts of nate row is the automatic planter feature yes automatic planter 
feature. By the way, there will be a manual planter feature in Nate Row Update 9.1. So there's just a quick sneak peek from the developers for you. Okay, step number one. You don't have to disable bug run or gather. You can do either one you want. It does not matter. Open the Planters Plus menu. Then you're going to want to enable Planters Plus because by default, it is disabled. So go ahead and check mark Planters Plus to enable it. You can use a preset here for any color hive you are, like blue, red, or white hive. Anyways, this might look confusing, but you'll get used to it. It's really simple actually go ahead and set your nectar priority so it's going to go from one to five one being the most important and five being the least important so you can go ahead and organize what nectars you want prioritized and not prioritized all that and then i can change the minimum percentage of each of these i suggest you keep them all at 70 percent if you are doing five nectar 70 percent is pretty even amongst all of them what this is is it sort of calculates what the minimum nectar percentage that you have like if i have a nectar right now it's going to look at it and it's going to estimate how much time i have left on that and if it has let's say i have one with 95 percent nectar duration and then another one with like 70 percent nectar uh, duration it will prioritize that 70 percent nectar duration over the 95 it pretty much will just go with whatever has the lowest or whatever is below 70%. I really hope that made sense. I was really, really, really sort of bad at explaining that. <laughs> Anywho, you can go ahead and choose when your planters will be harvested by your macro by changing this little number here. Um, there is an auto feature. This auto feature will have your macro automatically calculate how long to leave the planters in the field and when to collect them. So that's pretty neat. Another super cool thing, if you just want the full, I guess, rewards from your planters, you can go ahead and change it to full grown. So your macro will wait till they're fully grown and then collect them. So you get all the rewards out of that juicy planter. Now we have a list of allowed planters. So what planters do I have? I have every single planter except for the heat treated, petal planter, uh, pretty much all the end game planters, sadly. So in allowed planters, you're going to want to enable all the planters that you want this macro to to use. So if you don't want it to use the plastic planter because the plastic planter sucks, you can go ahead and uncheck that and now your macro will not ever use the plastic planter. It only uses the planters with a check mark. So please keep that in mind. You are allowed a maximum of three planters, so I'd suggest leaving on a maximum of, well, three plant or no, sorry, a minimum of three planters. Now moving on, we have allowed fields, which is pretty similar to allowed planters. It's just what fields you want your planters to be placed in and what fields you don't want your planters to be placed in. So yeah, pretty simple. Now you have show timers. You click on this and boom, now you have this little window here. This little window is going to have, usually it has all the planters and how long until it's harvested, how long they've been in the field for stuff like that all the stats of the planter um, will be located here um, you can click ready in case the macro did not keep up with your planter and you just want to collect it so you go click ready and you click clear so that way your macro is not confused and it doesn't like you know bug out when you collect the planter so if you're planning on manually collecting a planter while macroing and then restarting your macro i would highly advise you go to your timers and get rid of that planter if you've collected it because your macro will not know that you've collected that planter unless it's been collected out of the timers so now you've bug ran you've gathered you've used your automatic planters those are all the those are all the basics of the nate row macro oh but not yet we have one more we have questing how in the world do you auto quest how in the world did i get 2644 polar power which these days isn't even a lot compared to people's tens of thousands of polar power how do people do that well they macro and there is a way to automatically do quests using a macro. Step one, go to the quest tab. Step two, enable the quests NPC that you want your quests to come from. So like, let's say I want quests from Polar Bear. I would enable Polar Bear. I would click allow gather interrupt. So that way when I'm gathering, right, I'm just swinging my uh, my gummy baller around gathering from the pine tree forest because that's going to make me so much as a white hive and I can uh, finish my polar bear quest by enabling allow gather interrupt my gathering is completely paused 
and I will go run off and finish off my polar bear quest. Give it to polar bear, get a new polar bear quest, do a little bit of that one, and then go back to gathering. That's what gather interrupt is. Hopefully that clears it up for some people. Okay, yeah, that just about covers it for questing. Questing is quite simple. You literally just enable the quest NPCs that you want quests from, so that way it's just, it, it automatically does it for you. The whole quest gets done. Now, quest settings, you can change how long you want to be gathering for the quest. So like every now and then your uh, macro will interrupt your gathering to do a polar bear quest. Now, how long do you want it to interrupt your macro for? You can change it to whatever number you want, however long you want. Now, return to hive, you can do walk or reset. I highly suggest you do walk if you want to keep your pollen in your bag and reset if you don't care about the pollen in your bag. Okay, so now we've talked about the main features of the Nate Row macro. Now let's talk about calibrating the macro to your hive and your stats because you need to do this. Otherwise, a lot of the fail saves will break and this macro is going to suck if you don't calibrate your macro to your exact hive and stats so open up nate row go to settings and now you're greeted with this screen here this is where you're going to calibrate everything hive settings i suggest going to hive number three because that is the middle hive slot now you're going to select how many bees your hive has my hive has 50 bees so i would type in 50 bees but if you had 25 bees you'd type in 25 or 24 or 23 blah 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 all all those you know now if you own a private server go ahead and copy paste your private private server link into here so that way the macro will automatically rejoin you uh to your server your private server if you ever get disconnected so that's pretty important make sure you have your private server link copied and pasted into the miscellaneous settings so that way if you get disconnected you get reconnected into your private server and not some random public server you can make it reconnect every certain number of hours if you just want to sort of have like a server reset it's nice to have a fresh server um so the lag is gone there is an auto clicker setting here if you do want to use an auto clicker it's like yeah here let me show you guys i can go ahead and press f4 and boom look at that auto clicker isn't that awesome now here's a very important part calibrate your speed you can check your move speed by going to system scrolling down and finding move speed my move speed is 28 so i'd type in 28 but if your move speed is something like 20 you'd write 20 be sure that that's matched up make sure you don't have any haste at the moment make sure you have absolutely none and then check your move speed and type in your move speed i suggest you turn on move speed correction so that way your macro doesn't like fling you into the cactus patch when you're really trying to place your planter in the pumpkin patch you can have your movement method changed you can go with walking you can use the red cannon or you can use the blue yellow cannon all that just using cannon uses all the cannons walking takes the quickest routes by walking back to your hive sprinkler type be sure you have the correct sprinkler selected you can go with basic silver gold diamond or the supreme i have the supreme so i'd select the supreme sprinkler now convert your balloon you can change it to never always or every certain number of minutes so you can type in the minutes here i want to convert my balloon every 50 minutes i can do that every 30 minutes i can do that so on and so forth now you can have it reset multiple times so if you want to double reset at your hive you can go ahead and do that by selecting well your multiple reset you can go ahead and go with one two or three or even four i suggest you just set it to double reset sometimes so that way your bees energies are maximum all the time you can disable your tool use in case you're like not wanting to swing your tool like if you're using an, this uh, macro for an alt account a fuzzy account or something like that you don't want your petal wand to shoot out little petal shurikens to pop the bubbles that you want your main to pop uh, you can go ahead and just disable tool use um, you can have it announce guiding star so in the chat when your guiding star is launched into the distance into just deep outer space you can go ahead and have your account type it in the chat and announce that to the entire server anyways be sure you set your key settings to whatever you know keyboard like layout you have you most used qwerty is the most used keyboard layout uh azerty i have no idea where that's from but that apparently is a thing you can have it as other in case you have a completely different keyboard layout from qwerty and azerty you can go ahead and customize it right here and uh yeah you can add some key delay in case you want to delay your keys a bit more and that's it that's literally it that is the entire nate row macro and that is how to use it and this macro is arguably the best macro ever made because of its customizability uh, is that is that no yes where's the dictionary and its versatility i guess that's a better word to use versatility right yes no huge shout out to the dev team and the testers the contributors um and a gigantic thanks to zez 
The Nate Rope macro was heavily inspired by Zez, who had retired from macro development a while ago um, due to some uh, disclosed reasons. And so the wonderful team over at Nate Rowe uh, decided to pick up his work and, you know, sort of recreate it, re make it reborn, better, you know, improve it, you know, carry on the legacy. Do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. And so I will see you all next Saturday. So uh, yeah, goodbye.